Hello, everybody. Good afternoon and Happy New Year to you. Uh, this is the first time we've had a chance to chat like this in a while, and I do want to wish you a Happy New Year. Uh, this year feels a lot like last year. I'm sure you know we're actually uh, about to begin our third year uh, in, in dealing with the pandemic, and, and sometimes it seems like it's never going to go away, uh, although we, we do see some things that are encouraging out there, and I want to talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Uh, as we get to a new year, I, I, I'm trying to reflect a little bit, and there's some things that I want to make sure that we don't forget, uh, and, I, and there's some things that I'm, I'm really thankful for, and I wanted to, to express that to you today. Um, I, I think we certainly don't want to forget all the, the people that we have lost so far, our, our friends and family and loved ones. We've had more than 16,500 Alabamians that we've lost to COVID-19 uh, since the pandemic began. Uh, it's hard to imagine that number. Uh, we are going to have two straight years in Alabama of more deaths than births, and that has never happened before in the history of our state. Our state has never had more deaths than births, and yet we're going to have more deaths by a lot. Uh, and the, the additional numbers of deaths we've seen in each of the last two years uh, almost perfectly match the number of people we've lost to COVID. Um, it's really uh, unfortunate uh, and just something we've never experienced before. Uh, what's even more heartbreaking is that uh, of the uh, almost 9,000 people we've lost in Alabama in this year, this, cal this past calendar year, 2021, most of those were preventable. The largest majority of those were preventable if only we'd had people vaccinated. Uh, people who were vaccinated made up the tiniest fraction of those people who, who died from COVID uh, in the past year, and that's just such a tragedy. I, I would say we also don't want to forget the fantastic work being done by you all in public health. Uh, those of you who work in public health are the heroes of the pandemic. You're really on the front line. You're doing just incredible work every day. You're trying to take care of your own uh, families as well as your work with your community and, and work with your uh, fellow Alabamians. And you know, a lot of times uh, the people we're out there serving uh, don't want us to be serving them and don't understand why we're doing it. Uh, it can be pretty frustrating sometimes, but, but please know that the work you do is, is incredibly important. Uh, it's appreciated so much. I, I am so appreciative of it. And, and I really do think that the people in public health are the heroes of the pandemic. There are uh, a lot of things uh, that I'm uh, really thankful for. And on that same theme, I, I think the thing I'm most thankful for is to be able to work with such a great group of individuals. Uh, I am relatively new to public health in a way. I've been in public health now for, for six, seven or eight years. Uh, that was new to me. I had a previous career doing uh, medicine before. Uh, and so it's just been so fantastic to be in an organization with so many people who are dedicated to, to doing the right thing. Um, when I think about the people who work at ADPH, I think about people who just want to do the right thing. And I am sincerely grateful. Uh, and I hope I express that to you enough, but please let me say that today. I, I, I'm really thankful for each and every one of you. Thank you for letting me be a part of this organization and, and work with you. I wanted to give you an update on just a few topics, and, and the first one actually is not related to COVID, if you can believe that. We actually do other things in public health uh, that aren't related to COVID. Uh, I, I did want you to know uh, about uh, Alabama's infant mortality numbers. This is a, a big statistic that uh, a lot of you work on these projects and, and work really hard to try to produce uh, accurate numbers so that we can see how we're doing in the state of Alabama. You know, our infant mortality rate is a number that sort of serves as an overall measure for public health in general. It's a great marker, like a barometer, for how everything's going in Alabama. Um, a lot of people who don't really think they work on infant mortality do a lot of work that directly shows up in infant mortality. So maybe you work uh, in STDs, or maybe you work in injury prevention, or uh, maybe you work uh, in uh, some uh, chronic diseases, or there's so many different things in public health that actually contribute directly to the numbers that we see in public health, not just those people who are directly doing that work. Um, this past month, uh, we were able to present publicly our, our infant mortality numbers for the year 2020. Uh, the, the infant mortality rate for Alabama in the year 2020 is 7.0, and, and that uh, translates to, to seven infant deaths per 1,000 live births. Um, that is actually uh, tied with a couple of years ago for the lowest infant mortality rate Alabama has ever had. That, that's really terrific. Um, it, it could certainly be better. We have a long way to go. 
but that's actually, uh, in spite of everything going on in the pandemic, we, we had the lowest infant mortality rate Alabama has ever seen. And, and so, uh, first of all, thank you and congratulations to all of you who are working on that directly, but also all of you in public health who are contributing to that, maybe even in ways that you don't realize. We still have a ways to go. We, we have a, a tremendous disparity between uh, black babies that are born in Alabama and white babies that are born in Alabama. In fact, the infant mortality rate for African-American babies is about twice that uh, for white babies, and, and that's just not acceptable. We can't allow that to continue. That's a disparity that's gone on for a long time, and we're working very hard to try to address that. Um, but. But there's always things that we could do better. Uh, and yet we, we do celebrate the fact that overall the numbers for all babies, uh, black or white, are improving and will continue to do that important work. Let me give you an update now uh, on COVID. It, it's hard to, uh, to miss it. We, we have had COVID uh, just uh, out both ears for a long time, and, and it seems like that consumes most of our thoughts and most of our time. Uh, in spite of everything that's happened, the last week has been the worst week we have ever had in a two-year period in terms of COVID numbers each day. Uh, we are seeing uh, daily new case numbers uh, in the thousands. Uh, we have had uh, daily case numbers from yesterday of, of over 12,000 new cases reported to us in a single day. Uh, th the day before that was over 11,000. We had a few days last week of over 8,000 case numbers. All those are brand new records uh, uh, before any, for any other period in the pandemic. That, that's all happened just in the past week. Uh, and it's because of the new Omicron variant that's circulating around the world and, and all over the United States. Um, we still don't have the ability to, to do the sequencing to prove that it's Omicron, and yet we know that that's what it is. We've seen a, a, a significant change in the, in the behavior of how this virus gets transmitted. We've seen these huge numbers go up, and, and so we're certain Omicron is the cause. Uh, it's probably going to turn out to be true that Omicron uh, is not quite as dangerous as the Delta variant we had back in the summer or, or the other variants that we had before that. Uh, it seems that people don't get seriously ill quite as often. They don't uh, die probably quite as often as they did with the Delta variant. And, and if that ultimately turns out to be true, then we're very, very grateful for that. Uh, we, we certainly would take a silver lining anywhere we can find it. Uh, and yet, at the same time, uh, even though the, the percentage of people who get seriously ill or die uh, may be lower, the fact that we're having such huge numbers of people getting infected means that we're still going to see a large number of people who are going to need to be hospitalized in Alabama. And unfortunately, we're going to see uh, continuing large numbers of people who aren't going to survive this illness. The, the very best tool we have to prevent this remains vaccination. Um, I know uh, I've been talking about this uh, until I'm blue in the face, and I'm sure you're tired of hearing me talk about it, but it actually is the single best tool we have uh, to prevent transmission of this disease and to prevent serious illness and death. Uh, we are seeing breakthrough infections with Omicron because just because you're vaccinated doesn't mean you can't get infected. Uh, but people who are vaccinated are not the ones, uh, for the most part, who end up in the hospital, and, and they're rarely ever the people who die from this disease. So uh, even though Omicron uh, can evade the vaccine a little bit better than the previous variants we've seen, uh, we still need you to get vaccinated. Uh, I, I know many of you, most of you in public health, have made the decision to do that. Uh, if you're still uh, undecided about that, if you're still not sure uh, that, that you need to get vaccinated, please talk to your doctor. Please talk to the person that provides health care for you or your family. Uh, please talk to the pediatrician uh, who cares for your children if your children uh, are not vaccinated at this point. Or, or please call me. Please reach out to me by phone or email, and I'll be happy to try to address any questions I can. I, I don't know of a reason uh, that anyone shouldn't be vaccinated. There's some very rare allergic reactions for people who've had them previously with, with certain types of vaccines. And that's the only reason I, I can think of. If that doesn't apply to you, you need to be vaccinated. Uh, and we, we say that not because we're just trying to count numbers. We say that because we want you to be safe. We want to protect you. We want to protect the people that work here in public health. Uh, and we want you to be a, a uh, someone who can go to your community, go to your family and friends and people that you interact with uh, and let them know that you've been vaccinated as well. U ultimately, uh, we want everyone to be vaccinated and, and the example we set in public health uh, is really important. 
We are beginning to see uh, hospital numbers creep up in Alabama. Today we've had, uh, we, we have over 1,600 people uh, who are admitted to Alabama hospitals around the state. Uh, that number was, was about 1,300 yesterday. Uh, last week it was about 600. Uh, so you can see how quickly those numbers are going up. We're adding uh, a net increase uh, of more than 100 a day, and, and actually since yesterday, over 250 cases uh, net uh, increase. So we could very well be in a situation soon like we were seeing at the end of August or the first part of September. If you remember at that time, uh, we had uh, more than 100 Alabamians who needed critical care who didn't have an ICU bed to go to. Uh, people who had routine illnesses, who had car accidents, who needed to have a baby, who uh, needed to have a routine surgery. Many of those people were going to other states to do those routine things because there was simply no room in the hospital uh, to, to take care of routine things. So we hope that we're not going to be in that situation soon, but some parts of the country have already uh, reached a crisis situation. Uh, here in Alabama, again, we might have uh, a little time before we reach that, but, but we, we did see a significant uh, increase today uh, in hospitalizations. <clears throat> We appreciate all the work that you all are doing in the county health departments uh, to do vaccinations and to do testing. We're gonna see more demands for testing for sure. Uh, there, there are huge uh, surges in the demand for people who wanna get tests right now and a lot of test supplies are, are uh, in short supply uh, around the country. Uh, we uh, continue to offer testing right now at every county health department uh, every day, at least, uh, at least it's available uh, every day or, or for parts of the day. And, and I'm very proud that we've been able to, to maintain that for now. Uh, I, I know that we wish we could do it uh, even more broadly. We wish we could do more testing uh, outside the county health department environment. And in some cases we are, uh, we are looking at to, uh, we are discussing with private vendors about uh, setting up testing sites again, uh, and we know that's only going to increase, particularly as uh, this Omicron variant starts going through our schools, and we're going to see, see increasing numbers of, of school-aged kids who are infected. Uh, that's what's happened in other parts of the country, and that's what we expect to see uh, any minute here. The CDC, from whom we uh, t take our cue on public health guidance, has made some changes in the past week uh, related to how long people need to be quarantined if they're exposed to a disease, or how long they need to be isolated if they actually become infected uh, with COVID. Uh, they've shortened those periods uh, in, in many cases uh, so that people can come back to work earlier. Uh, it, you may be able to come back in as early as five days if you're infected, uh, as long as you're not providing direct patient care to people, as long as you're not having fever and your symptoms are improved, uh, and as long as you can continue to wear a mask uh, for up to 10 days uh, total, so five more days after, after returning. So some people who are infected can come back as early as five days. Uh, that will allow us to help a little bit with all the staffing issues that we have. Uh, I, I think you're probably aware, but, but we have huge numbers of people who work for us at ADPH who are currently infected. That's exactly the situation that our hospitals are dealing with right now. Many uh, manufacturing uh, firms, many other businesses or other employers are all dealing with large numbers of people who are infected. Uh, and it's really a, a devastating situation right now. So uh, I would ask you, uh, please, just to continue uh, working with, with your coworkers and, and helping each other cover, helping each other uh, take care of the important tasks that we need to do while people are out. I appreciate so much the cooperation uh, that, that people have shown and, and that great spirit of working together. Uh, we, we believe we probably have three or four more weeks uh, of this Omicron surge. If what's happened in other countries tells us anything, we may be out of this uh, perhaps in a month or so, uh, but for the next month, we're, it, it's gonna be a tough time. We're gonna be short-staffed. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of people getting exposed and needing to be out, or, or people getting uh, actually infected and needing to be out, and we hope that um, that, that won't last too long. Uh, but just hang in there with us, and, and hopefully we'll be over the hump uh, very soon. Those are really the big updates that, I, that we have right now. Uh, I, I just want you to know again that my heart goes out to all of you who are, who are struggling with this. This has been a tough mental health year and a half, almost two years for people that are dealing with this. Uh, I hope you'll think about ways to, to practice some self-care. 
Uh, think about ways to try to uh, get away, if you can, uh, from, uh, from thinking about what you do all day, every day. Enjoy spending time with your family, if you can do that. Enjoy spending time with, with whatever hobbies you have that you can do safely that can distract yourself a little bit. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's a really challenging time to be in public health or, or really just to live in our society right now. And I hope you'll all just be aware that, that we do need to take care of ourselves first and foremost, and that's what best allows us to take care of others. So thank you again, everybody, for joining us today. It, again, it's a real pleasure to work with you. I'm really glad we had a chance to talk together today, and I look forward to speaking with you soon.